Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'm going to try and focus a little bit of attention again on XBRL, and I apologize. I've been going between here and uh, the Circuit City bankruptcy hearing next door. Uh, and, uh, and actually, they have a lot in common since it cost Circuit City $30 million to get a $50 million dip financing package. Needless to say, their Chapter 11 was uh, short. Uh, but uh, without getting into whether TARP funds should be used for dip financing or encourage a debtor in possession financing to stop corporations from going bankrupt completely, uh, Mr. Horn, uh, Mr. Uh, Bolgano, let me, let me t go toward you again. I think uh, I heard uh, Mr. Uh, Jordan kind of get on this, but I want to be absolutely sure. If XBRL were to be implemented going forward, well, let's go the other way. If, in fact, we were to use XBRL to try to drill down into where the TARP money has gone today, would you be able to do that? Yes, sir. With the uh, proper authority from the government, we would be able to provide the tool to be wielded by the government for oversight. So you could provide the tool. They would need to make sure they had access to the, the divergent well, we would, databases. We would, we would be uh, able to provide the standard uh, to be wielded as a tool, a dictionary, but it's not a system. It's not software. Sure, we realize that it's you, a, you allow standard. other people to develop independently it's, software that use your right. technology. It's, Just, it's similar, if you had asked me in 1993, would it make it easier to get information from people if we had the web? I would immediately answer you yes. It would be a quantum leap in the efficiency, time, and expense okay, to then, gather information. Right. So I guess, Mr. Horn, would you have the equivalent of Google now that we've established that it's like getting the web? Uh, would you have the ability to drill down? Well, I would love to be using that analogy. Um, um, I think that the key is is that we would actually create something that would be, act, to a greater extent, even more actionable relative to this subject matter because we would be dealing with the numbers of events that are specifically related to the financial instances that would be involved. So the answer to that, Mr. Congressman, is yes, we would, we would be in that type of position. And then I think I'll shift. Uh, obviously, if we implemented this technology going forward, it wouldn't just be the two of you we'd be asking, but in fact, all our regulators would then have the tools to do this themselves. That is correct. And it would also be on the basis of um, the fact that we're asking through uh, Congresswoman Maloney and, and Congressman King um, and also in, in the Senate to uh, pass a bill that would allow access to the regulated data so it wouldn't just be the data that's publicly available but also the data that would be available only to those people who would have access for regulatory purposes. Okay. And then, Mr. Bolofsky, um, when I when we had Mr. Kashkari, or Secretary Kashkari here a few minutes ago, uh, he answered in very, very many ways that, of course, he would love to have the ability to have more transparency, to, to know the value of these assets in order to value them and so on. But today, are we, in fact, as I, I'm going to lead a little bit here, are we, in fact, asking for repeatedly, and are you asking for repeatedly, production of documents almost in the way that attorneys do in a court case, where you have to know what you want, you ask for it, they turn it over to you. Often you have to sift through it and say, but it's not in a format I can use. Uh, can you, can you re-manipulate it and send it back to us? Is that pretty much what's going on in the delivery of uh, answers to your questions by the various TARP recipients? Um, no, Congressman. I, from what my audit chief tells me, we've gotten uh, good narrative answers that we think are going to be very useful. We, we I, I was talking about production of data, not narrative answers. Well, we you haven't. Know, Bank of Amer no, in, in fairness, Bank of America said they were solvent, so solvent that they could turn around and buy Merrill Lynch. Today we know that that's not true. That in fact we'd have been much better off having Merrill Lynch live or die on its own, B of A live or die on its own, and not have two organizations perhaps too big to fail be now two organizations made into one, too, too, too big to fail. So back to the question. You're receiving answers to your request, narrative answers. Uh, Mr. Kashkari, of course, if he asked for it, is receiving them. But the real question, the question that Mr. Horn was asked and answered was, do you, know, do you or does anyone in the federal government have the ability to basically ask the question if they have the access and get the answers from raw data uh, diverse raw data, or do we in fact depend on often self-serving individuals at various large banks who do not want to fail 
to give us answers that cause us to give them money only to later get answers that they need more money? You can ask. Uh, the gentleman's time has expired, but please answer the question. We have not asked for that type of raw data in, in part because it would be simply way too expensive for us to analyze it. So you, uh, if I can conclude, so you don't ask for the information because you couldn't analyze it. People are here today talking about the tools to analyze it both prospectively and, ret and retrospectively. And we, we're, we're being told, no, we're going to rely on companies to deliver us information you know, that the, have proven to be unreliable. The gentleman makes a point, if I may, and, sure. and that is, 